Hello again, one and all, and welcome to episode 395 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube. As always, first comment before it slides off my screen is to Thomas, goes from, is from Thomas, by the way, who says, hello, really looking forward to this list. Last year's one was great. That's good to know. No pressure, right? Bonjour, says Sister Parfum. Rachel is here as well saying hello. Ooh, sophisticated. Get you, says Kevin. Aileen is here as well. Rachel says, surely this will be my favourite list of the year. Well, again, no pressure. Autumn is the best season. Excited for this list, says Headless Sense. Okay, you have all read the video title because that is how you know that we are doing top 10 cents for autumn. We've been doing these seasonal ones now for a couple of years, but as, as I said in a previous video, um, I usually manage to get in there before the season actually starts. And the, the beginning of autumn completely took me by surprise because I guess autumn kind of meteorologically started on the 21st or the 22nd or thereabouts. Paige HH says, yes, I've made it. So many gems to break out, says Mika. Best season for fragrance. David is back here as well. I should uh, very, very quickly say as well, if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do consider doing so. And if you do subscribe, you may want to click on the little bell so that you get notifications of new videos coming your way. And if you would like to find out how you can support my work, you should be able to see a link to my coffee page in the video description below. And if you don't want to do that, and if you want to do it straight through YouTube, then Super Chats are, and no, it is just Super Chats on YouTube, isn't it? Thank you very much. Are always very, very welcome. But let's put all of that aside and let's talk about perfumes. Now, everyone thumbs up, says Rachel. Oh, yes, I should also say, please, if you enjoy the video, give it a like, because that really, really helps spread the word through the algorithm of the YouTube. Um, I try to give these scents a very, very, as Miss Big Miss Cabbage says, love a listicle. Yes, yeah, so do I. We, we, it brings out, it brings out the geekery in us, doesn't it? Um, I try to give these a very, very, very kind of loose theme, um, either based on something that may, may be happening in the wider world or wherever I may happen to be in my head or whatever. And, um, here comes the preamble and caveat, says Gavin. Ooh. Do, do, do we not want the context and the preamble and the caveats? Do you make yourself a cup of tea and come back in two minutes when the when the preamble is done? Um, this time, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe for the last few weeks I've kind of been in a little bit of a grump when I've been going around about, you know, going, going about my daily business, seeing people in, in, in the sort of world around us and and there was a bit of me that kind of thought, we need to bring a little bit of style back. We need to bring a little bit of sophistication back. Um, and th th and that's it. That is that is the loose theme. And, and, it, and it is as, as loose as that to kind of think of scents that to me evoke a, a, a sense of stylish, effortless sophistication. So I think that if you wear these, um, that is what you will be projecting to varying degrees, of course. I mean, I'm looking at them now and there are some that are maybe a little bit more kind of loudly, brusquely, nouveau, richy than others, if I can put it that way. But generally speaking, these are the ones that that that, that I that I think are pretty sophisticated. Uh, Lindsay says, last year's video was the best, made me take the plunge on Zonka. Ah, inter interesting. Um, Gavin says, whose unstylishness has offended you? Well, definitely nobody's from those of you watching this video. <laughs> no, just just generally. I think generally, I think there was a there was a warm day when I went up to London um a few a couple of weeks ago. And London is not at its best on a warm day because people just really, really seem to think that bearing a lot of flesh is the best way to go when it's, sorry, this is sounding so snobby now. You're bringing out this aspect. I think also having come from Italy in the summer, when somehow people were able to dress for very, very, very high temperatures in a way that didn't kind of make it look as though they had just that second rolled out of bed. I think it was the contrast between the two that made me think, okay, maybe we need to go on a kind of battle to bring back a little bit of style and sophistication. I suspect it is a battle we are going to lose those of us fighting it in England, but hey, we can we, we can try, right? We can try. 
Um, and I think I think we need to start. So what have I got first on my list? Okay, I wanted to do this one because actually this is one that I very, very, very recently reviewed. Um, it's a, it's, so Gavin says, yes, it's a post-Italian holiday hangover. Do you know, in so many ways, actually, you're probably right. I think in terms of style and food and weather, that is precisely where I am at the moment. So this is this is this is therapy. This video is therapy, and I hope you will also feel suitably therapeutified. Let's coin a verb while we're at it. So this is really really new. Um, I only just reviewed it a couple of weeks ago, and it is from Frederick Mal, uh, the latest composition done by Jean Claude Elena, and it's called Heaven Can Wait. This one again is. Um, turning out to be fairly divisive as far as Mal um, fragrances go, uh, because last year's last year's Uncut Gem was pretty divisive. Um, I was on the side that wasn't so keen on it. Um, Heaven Can Wait, I'm really, really a, a big fan of and have been so far, but, but turns out lots and lots of people don't like it. They wanted it, they want it to be um, louder, they wanted to, um, I, I guess, display more facets, um, but but I, I'm really, really taken with it. And um, I suppose I don't really need to talk about it very, very much because it, it was only reviewed, I think, what, two weeks ago on this channel? And you should be able to find uh, the video very, very easily. Um, but I think it's beautiful. It, it's, 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 it's a sort of throwback to sense maybe of 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 the 60s and the 70s without making it really really obvious which one it is as i said on my blog i just happened at an event in london to meet frederick mal um very soon after my video review of this and so i was able to test my theory on him because i wondered if it was based on caron's poivre and he said no and then I asked him, I kind of countered and I said, so is it Belogia? And he also said no, and he wasn't going to tell me. Um, some people wonder if it's actually uh, Iris Gris. I don't, I, I don't know, it, it's not It's not irisy enough for me to be that because um, it's, 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 it's very, very clothy and carnation-y and spicy and peppery. Um, but above all, it's it's warm and all embracing and and, enveloping, um, which is exactly what the brand uh, wanted wanted to achieve. Jean-Claude Elena wanted to uh, play around with warm spices. He's usually more comfortable with cool spices, um, as we will talk about in a few minutes, actually, I've just realised. And he wanted something that wouldn't actually shout very loud, but would feel very much like being enveloped and being given a hug by, by a scent, a very, very warm scent. Um, and I think it works. I, I, I think it's really rather lovely and very, very sophisticated, maybe, because it isn't overly loud. Uh, Rachel says, I wouldn't think Iris Gris. No, no, I don't, I don't think so either. I don't think so either. Uh, Olfactive Story says, I'm really liking it. I wish I could get a bo bottle of it, but it's a bit pricey. Price is a... Uh, I mean, you know, we, we've said over this last year on this channel a few things in every now and then about price, but perfume prices... And candle prices. Have you seen the price of the latest Diptyque candles, the ones that where the scents have been done by Olivia Giacobetti? Um, in the UK, I believe they retail at just over two, 200 pounds. I think it's like 208 pounds, which is also, it's like, you know, where does the eight pounds come from? Over 200 pounds for a candle. For a ca and if that isn't going to set a precedent, it, I mean, it's really, really worrying. You know, how good does a candle have to be? for you to actually spend, you know, a fifth of a thousand pounds on it. It's, it, 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 it is quite mind-boggling, and these numbers start becoming meaningless after a while. Uh, Ty says, candle prices make me sick, and don't get me started on perfume. Uh, Eric Brandon says, the one that shocked me recently was Alien Goddess. I remember when Niche was that price. I don't know how much Alien Goddess is. Aileen says, 200 squids for a candle. Yeah, 208, I think. Um, uh, Luciana says, hello from Brazil. Uh, Helen White says, that should be a life-changing candle. I know, I know. It, it, I mean, maybe they are. I, I haven't smelled any of them yet. Um, anyway, so we're on, we've done our first one. 
And for our second one, I would also like to do one that's uh, that's from this year. Uh, drawn by Sense says, I will just buy some tea lights from Tesco. Are they, do they do good scented ones? I don't, I don't know. Do they do scented ones at Tesco's? Um, uh, Ty says, oh, you're, Ty's talking to Eric. Okay, you carry on amongst yourselves. I wanted to bring this one in because... Um, because I think it'll work really, really well in autumn, and I think it's very sophisticated, and also because I wore it a lot over the summer in Sicily, and I really, really enjoyed wearing it. I did a video on it uh, not too long ago. This is the latest from um, Eccentric Molecules, which means it's done by Geyser Schoen, and it's his Harrods exclusive, which you may be able to make out, you probably won't, just at the top of the bottle there, is called H01, because it's meant to be Harrods 01. Um, and let's have a respray and watch while I am transported back to, to Sicily. Um, it's, oh, Gavin says, how are you getting on with that vintage Durella? I haven't I haven't actually uh, worn it since since I've opened it here in the video. I need, I need to choose a, a good moment. I did wonder about bringing in, uh, about adding current Durella to this list, but I thought you might all mob me, and 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 there is another Dior. There is another Dior as well. Um, so this is <laughs> Paul says. I can't believe you're shaming my can candle shopping habits. Writing from my diamond encrusted throne. No shame attached. If you feel that you can spend that much money on a candle and you enjoy it, then just burn it responsibly. Um, this is this is a really really beautifully done leather and it ticks the sophisticated box because it's suede like and it's smooth very 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 gently um seamlessly spicy um probably tons of isoe super because it wouldn't be a gazer shown perfume without a lot of isoe super um but not not you know not overly isoe supery that's coming up too <laughs> i'm just looking at this one big bottle here um and I think what I appreciated in this as well is that there's a really nice citrusy note at the top, and maybe it's like citrus spicy. It, it could be lime, it could be cardamom and the and the citrusy facets of cardamom. Um, and this, yes, the, the, this the, the mal, the eccentric molecules, several of the perfumes coming up to me suggest that very, very, very particular, shade of brown and amber that you get from leaves when they when they start turning in the autumn um and and that feeling of the, the, there's something there's something romantic about that time of year but also something a, a little bit sad because because you're heading into winter and 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 the joys and and the, and and the exuberance of of summer are fading away and things start to become a little bit more about retreating don't they but then but then snuggly coats come out and turning your collar up starts happening again and th this is this is very much that type of scent um and it and it is it is a hue it is a color in the same way that the frederick mal is a color uh, rachel says so far these fragrances are perfect for early fall when the temperatures first dip to layering sweater weather lovely um and, and i think i think that's the idea you know that kind of sophisticated Am I going to actually wear my sweater or am I going to kind of like have it draped across my shoulders type feel? A look which I have never been able to pull off because, of course, I am nowhere near as sophisticated as 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 I think everybody else should be sophisticated, right? So, okay, the, that's... And then the third one is also a recent-ish one. It's from 2022 and it's one um, for which I am still very, very grateful uh to you because if you remember i think i mentioned it in a video and then you very generously basically funded it so by Contin biche somebody just mentioned Contin biche this is from l'artisan parfumeur this is their iris de gris as opposed to iris gris um you can see i haven't had many opportunities to wear it but it is not for you know not because of not enjoying it i really love it and i'm i need to kind of make it a little bit more prominent in my collection and start bringing it out a bit more for um for the autumn let's pop that on there let's start doing the the still life oh rachel says 
Uh, love, love this fragrance. Yes, I, I, well, you know how much I love it. I made it one of my perfumes of the year in 2022, didn't I? Um, now this is, this is really quite green at the start and it's probably, yeah, it's going to be the greenest of, of the 10 that we've got for you today. Um, oh, and Paris says 156 watching and only six likes. Come on, people, show the love. I've got I've got 53 likes, so I don't know where they, where you're getting six likes from, but by all means, send us some more likes. Oh, 54. But yeah, thank you very much for pointing that out, Paris. Um, this is green in that kind of real 1970s galbanomy, freshly cut grass green, which which is just immediately, as soon as you say that, then that's it. You've got you've got sophistication right there because you're in the territory of Chanel number no. 19. Uh, you're in the territory of things like um Alliage from Estee Lauder. Um but but here the green then does go beautifully and seamlessly and effortlessly and sophisticatedly into this great um, iris note. Pradeep says iris nazarena is nice for this time too. Yes, I love that one. That's from Aedis de Venustas. I've yet to see their new bottles in the flesh, by the way. Has anybody out there tried any of their new stuff? I tried reaching out to the brand to see if I might be able to buy some samples from them or something, but, but they, they, they didn't write back. And I don't know if they have a UK stockist at the moment. Um, Sir Siage says, mmm, galbanum. Um, and I did wonder as well about bringing in Frederick Mal's Synthetic Jungle by Anne Flipo, but no, I thought I'll I'll do this Mal and I'll bring I'll bring in the green galbanum from L'Artisan. Um and this, I guess, I think what I love about this one is that even though the galbanum is super green, even though the iris is quite pronounced, it somehow manages to not be cold and not be chilling and not be austere. And and that hint you know the, the gris the grayness alluded to in the title somehow comes across it's like it's like a really really beautifully cut maybe green wool or green tweed suit um you know the kind of suit that is all about the texture as or as much about the texture as it is about um the cut um just really 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 elegant and you kind of think okay all you need is this suit and maybe a black t-shirt and some smart shoes, and you're going to look like a million dollars. Um, I like a sharp iris in the fall, says Mika. Ah, so which one would you recommend? Which one would you wear? Um, that was... Yeah, see, I'm, I'm so grateful to you for this one, and I always think of you when I wear this one, and, and I, should, I should wear it more often. I should wear it more often. Really, really nicely done, Iris. Okay. There will be a few more modern ones um, but I uh, in, in the rest of the list, but I thought we would go back in time now, several decades, to the 1950s. In fact, not that my bottle is from the 1950s, although my bottle is now, you know, probably in some senses considered a bit of a vintage because my bottle, I think, is maybe like 14 or 15 years old now. So probably the scent has been reformulated a little bit along the way. So I say, as I say, from 1955, composed by the one and only Henri Robert. This is the Chanel representation in this list. And it is, of course, Pour Monsieur. I'm, I'm treasuring these drops. You know, I don't overwear them, but I, I, I really, really love this scent. Probably one of the best Chypre composed for men. Um, and you know, if there is a single perfume genre that, that epitomizes sophistication, it's, it's almost certainly the Chypre. Um, some of these would, you know, fall into that category, I suppose, more than others. We've got another, at least one more coming your way a little bit later on. Um, Chanel is such a great house for fall, says Rachel. Now, that's an interesting observation. Um, yeah, actually, I don't think I've thought about it in that way, but 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 you're right. You're right. I think a lot of the perfumes have that not overdone warmth that that is very autumn friendly. Is that what you meant? I wonder. Um, Sycamore is good for autumn, says Joe M eighty six or sixty eight rather. Sam says masterpiece. Yeah, this this really is wonderful. Oh, don't tell me my spray is not working. Okay, and. Um, MB says, especially when you're going for stylish. Is this a Chypre or Pour Monsieur? Um, oh, 
just smelling it now. It's already wafting up from the blotter. It's actually kind of like um, more um, more diffusive than I remember it being. Um, so, th th in many ways, this is actually a classic chypre. If you don't know what we're talking about when we talk about chypre, uh, as I say, it is it is a genre, a style of perfumery, in the same way that, for example, a fougère is a style of perfume, or a or a rose, or a, um, you know, some kind of soliflor is a style of perfume. A sheep is very much based on the interplay between oak moss and mossy notes in the base, and herbal notes going through the heart, and then citrusy notes at the top. That accord creates a feel that is just so grown up and so sophisticated, and really refreshing at the top and yet with tremendous depth um, and the reason why classic sheep are harder and harder to do some would say impossible to do nowadays is because you can't use oak moss in the quantities that you need we have got plenty of very very convincing very well done nouveau 21st century sheep out there but 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 they're different they're different beasts and and the sheep um, structure has also lent itself to endless variations. So you get your fruity sheep and you get your floral sheep. Um, one that, you know, th that comes to mind from the floral categories or floral, floral varieties is Serge Lutin's um, Rose de Nuit. It is Rose de Nuit, I think, that, that I'm talking about, which is just a really, really great uh, rose sheep. If I had a sample of it, it probably would have been on this list. Um, I think Pour Monsieur is still very convincing in the base, says Eric. I, I would agree. I would agree. Uh, Sergej says Roger Parfum d'Aguilev is one heck of a sheep if you ignore the price. Yeah, that is very, very definitely, very overtly inspired by uh, Gavlin's Mitsuko. I think sheep are great for all seasons, honestly, says Spaced Out. 31 Rue Cambon, at least, another Chanel. Um, and Dusan says, scent of the night is sheep palatin. That's... Um, MDCI, right? I seem to remember liking that as well. What a perfect mini class on the sheep, says Rachel. Um, well, <laughs> I'm glad you found it useful. Um, but this is, and it it, it it is those contrasts here that, that are so beautiful because you're smelling it and you get sparkling, translucent, weightless citrus top. And then that fantastic inky bitter, bitter, bitter is a word I should have used, bitter metallic mossy woody base coming through in the dry down and it's just so chic and so sophisticated and somehow so you know french in inverted commas all of the things that we like best um about the french shan says hello shan by the way 4160 tuesdays oak mossery is great i think i haven't smelled that one um david says serge lutin's chypre rouge is wonderful too for autumn i always never i never know quite how to take that one i, I find it a little bit too too kind of turn the volume up I, I don't know i need to revisit it i do have it i do have it but i'm never really drawn to wearing it and let's do number five which will mean that we are at the halfway mark now speaking of something being glad we're going to go to the quietest scent on the list now, this originally came out in 2004 and then disappeared. And then it was reissued by its original perfumer when he became in-house perfumer at the brand. So a lot of you are already probably working out who it is I'm talking about. The perfumer in question is Francis Curgion. The brand, of course, is Dior. And the scent is the 2022 reissued um, Cologne. Blanche. Um, and I, I say 2022 reissue because this is what this bottle is. This is this is what I've got in my collection. Um, as I say, first one came out in 2004. And sometimes you want to do sophisticated scent in a very, very, very kind of unassuming sort of way, don't you? You want to be quiet. You want to kind of have, have a sort of stealth James Bond type scent. It's always been this thing, hasn't there? You know, what would James Bond wear? Apparently, according to the actual Ian Fleming books, Bond wore Blenheim bouquet. And, and that kind of makes sense because he probably wouldn't want a scent that would attract a lot of attention to itself. Um, and that's what Cologne Blanche is. Mika says, it smells like baby wipes on me. Okay, 
But I'm going to say that some baby wipes smell really good. I mean, obviously they do vary, but some brands, somebody's thought very, very carefully about the scent of those baby wipes. So maybe maybe you uh, just have happen to have experience of a particularly beautifully smelling brand of baby wipe. Um, but there you go. Big Miss Cabbage says, I love a touch of baby wipe. I know it depends on the baby wipe, right? Um, and this is what I love about Cologne Blanche as well is that it's actually quite hard to grasp and quite hard to describe. You think it's powdery, but then a kind of scattering of wood shavings come across. You you think it's going to be maybe faintly white floral or rosy, but then it kind of seems to go in the direction of mimosa and something a bit more spring-like, like, you know, freesia. It's It's unexpectedly abstract for something so quiet. And I think white cologne is a perfect name for it because it has got the lightness, the effervescence, the the the, the diffusiveness of a cologne, but it, it isn't overly or overtly citrusy, it isn't overly herbal, it seems to be doing something entirely different with the cologne structure, um, which which is what makes it special. And, and yes, I suppose if there's one note that comes out more than anything else, it is this kind of powdery, slightly soapy feel that maybe some of us are reading as baby wipe. Um, Mimosa and Immortel too, says MB, that kind of thing. Headless Sense says baby wipes can smell nice. Yeah, they absolutely can. Killian's Back to Black has that kind of facet and it smells comforting somehow. Um, yeah, it, it's, and, you know, even though it's quiet, it actually also lasts longer than you think it's going to last, especially if you spray it on, on fabric. Its longevity is not at all bad. Um, Mika says, my pick from Dior for fall would be Eau Noir. And as you know, if you're regular viewers, I adore Eau Noir as well, but I thought I've talked about it quite a bit and it's probably been featured in lots of other top tens and things. So let's just do something a little bit different. Um, Left Terrace says, rumors say that Curgion is working on a Fahrenheit elixir. <sighs> well, I would be very interested to smell that. Uh, original vintage Fahrenheit takes some beating. So let, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see what we can, let's, let's see what happens. Um, Paul is asking a more kind of general question, says, do seasons really matter or is it just a way to have fun thinking about how we narrate our lives with scent? I, I would say it's the latter, okay? These videos are meant to be mostly fun. They're meant to give you some food for thought, some sense for thought, but, but ultimately, to just wear whatever you want to wear whenever you want to wear it. But yeah, that, that, that's why, that's why when I'm curating these lists, composing these lists, I try to think a little bit more about the theme than than the season, if you if you get what I'm saying. Right, so we have done five, which means we are at the halfway mark, which is a good point for me to say that you are watching episode 395 of Love at First Scent with me, Persolaise. If you're watching live or you're watching the recording, please feel free to ask a question, leave a comment. I get round to them in due course. And what are we doing today? We are presenting my list of the top 10 perfumes for autumn 2023, with a loose theme of them being the sense of sophistication, Sophist effortlessly elegantly sophisticated scents. And I'm very, very much enjoying seeing some of your um, recommendations too. Um, we need to move on. What's number six? Number six on the list. Okay, so number six is again a kind of more recent-ish one. It's from 2021 and it's by Olivier Cresp from a brand that not many people seem to be aware of. I mean, it could be that that's because in the UK, I believe they're still exclusive to Harrods. But if that's not the case, and if you are from the retailer that stocks them, please don't shoot the messenger. I just need to check out my information a little bit more carefully. And the, the founder of the brand, one of the co-founders of the brand actually came on this channel and uh, gave an interview very, very kindly. The brand is Lila Noor, uh, very much inspired by India and Indian uh, ingredients and Indian codes. And this one is, as I say, by Olivier Cresp, and it's called Incarnation. It is very definitely my favorite from the brand. I think because it's the most abstract uh, and the most retro, it is really gorgeously uh, retro scent. Um, let's have a spray. And this color, isn't, isn't the color of this bottle also sort of autumnal, but also Indian and kind of 
fun and happy without losing a sense of sophistication. I mean, I love that kind of oranginess going through to the pinkiness. I'm not sure that's coming across all that well on the on the camera. Now, this one, you know, I said that some of the scents that I'm presenting to you are maybe a bit louder than others, maybe a tiny little bit more garish than others. Well, I guess this is this is this is one of the louder ones because this is very 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 diffusive, uh, but it works extremely well. Again, it it feels like a modern retelling of a sort of old school chypre. Christine says, I'd love to try Lila Noor, but they don't send samples outside outside of the US. That's a shame. Um, I'm waiting for Lucky Scent to carry the brand. Uh, is that on the cards? Are you just saying that because you're hoping that's what's going to happen? Or do you know that that's on the cards? Um, Christian says, something I got over the summer I'm really looking forward to wearing this autumn is Papillon's Anubis. That's a very, very good recommendation. Yes, thank you for that one. Um, and... A great fall scent, Rachel says, is Zoologist's Chipmunk by Pia Long. Thank you very much for that recommendation as well. Um, so yeah, but going back to um, Incarnation, this is this is a kind of white floral sheep with a strong, quite indolic um, jasmine note, shades of uh, Superstitious from Frederic Mal, you know, the one by done by Dominique Ropion. It's it, this this stuff has got shoulder pads. So it's a kind of 80s version of sophistication. And I suppose I'm kind of shooting the theme in the foot there because 80s sophistication is everybody else's vulgar, right? But but a, a bit of 80s sophistication we, we need every now and then in our lives. Um, it's It's got... It, it, it's it's a very, very sort of, sort of strong interplay between jasmine and woods. And it's interesting comparing it or thinking about it in relation to Garland's Samsara. Um, because it does have a kind of Samsara-esque feel, but without without the, the, the heavy sandalwood. It sort of goes more into the sort of sheep territory with the mosses um, and different sorts of woods and a jasmine that seems... Mm, I was going to say more assertive. It's hard to think of a jasmine that's more assertive than the one in in Samsara, but um, maybe just more jagged edged. Um, it's interesting that they called it incarnation because actually there is something unsettled and unsettling about this scent. It's probably the the least zen of these super sophisticated scents. I'm looking at the four that are left. And there's one. There's a one of them is also a little bit on the loud and sort of maybe slightly angry side. But um, this one, this one feels it, it's as though it's got a slightly restless soul, and yet it manages to kind of hold on to an inner core of sophistication somehow. Not many comments about it because I guess maybe some of you haven't um, managed to try it. Oh, Paul makes an interesting comment saying sophistication needs a dash of vulgarity. To give it character, well then I should be fine. Um, Nick says I love vintage Samsara Parfum so much. What a masterpiece! Um, yeah, that sounds like it would be good. I don't have a vintage Parfum. So no, I do actually. I tell a lie. I have a few drops. I have a few drops left somewhere. Okay, so that's our incarnation, which means we have four left. For number seven, we go to the th one that's in the thumbnail. It's interesting, none of you have commented on the thumbnail yet. I usually try to do the thumbnail ones pretty quickly because you all know what they are. Um, and it is from, uh, from 2012, composed by Jan Vanier for the brand Arquiste, founded by Carlos Huber. This is called Alexandre. Um, always been one of my favorites from the brand. It's one of the ones that they launched with. Let's have a spray, actually, because this is, um, I forget what the inspiration was. Was the inspiration a passage from Pushkin or somebody will, somebody will let me know. But it kind of doesn't matter because it, it conjures a, a you know, you, you kind of suddenly feel as though you've gone into a Chekhov play um, because it's, it's very, very, you know, never having experienced a Russian winter, it kind of makes me think that this is what a Russian winter might smell like. It's it's very, very junipery, very woody, 
brittle. It's you, you, you can hear twigs snapping on ice and snow, you know, because people are walking on this bitter, 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 bitter cold landscape. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's characters from Dr. Zhivago. It's characters from Anna Karenina. It's, it's people in, you know, like army officers in, in smart uniforms with smart caps, with, with sharp collars and, and mustaches. You know, it, it's totally, totally that kind of quintessentially sharp, romantic Russian winter sort of look, which is, you know, I, I re, I'm conscious as I'm saying this, that the Russian winter is one of the most lethal things on the planet. And there are probably loads and loads of people over the centuries who've thought that it's the one of the least romantic things they've gone through in their lives, a Russian winter. But you get what I'm saying. It's like, you know, if you can kind of put the reality at bay for a bit and only focus on the romantic bits of a Russian winter, this is it. Um, Sharon says the Arquiste bottles are great, distinctive, and handsome. I agree. I agree. I like the bottle design. They're 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 truly unisex. Their bottles. I think. Um, I love Iris Silver Mist for Fall. Says RM. Unapolog unapologetically sophisticated, aloof, and compliments the dampness of the season. Um, I'm sure that I've included that on a list somewhere. So that's why I thought I better not do it in this one. I mean, I adore Iris Silver Mist, as you know. And there's something about Alexandra as well that just feels a tiny little bit sour, which maybe is that sense of the something something unexpected, something just slightly wrong footing to make you not to make it not possible for you to just dismiss the scent and make you think that you've figured it out within two minutes. That there is there is something odd about it. Um but I think that's great because, as I say, it makes you want to keep smelling it. It, make, it makes you want to keep thinking about it and, and trying to figure it out. Right. Three to go, um, including one, you know, out and out bona fide masterpiece. Next, we go to 2006 for a scent that if I featured it on a list um, here already, then I can't remember when it was. I don't think I've talked about it for a long time, but it's been on my mind because I don't know how much I'm allowed to say at this point, but there is a kind of follow-up to it coming very, very soon, a flanker, a flanker that I've been quite taken with so far, but perhaps we'll have a chance to talk about that in a few weeks. But this is from 2006 by Nathalie Lorson. This is um, Lalix. Encre Noir, as I say, not one that we've mentioned here very much on this channel. Um, it is a, a very, very simple scent in many ways because it is a basically a um, oh something something is telling me that my chat is disconnected and then successfully connected. I have no idea why. Just pardon me while I try to see what is going on here. Okay. I don't know what that was all about, but never mind. I guess the broadcast was not interrupted. Um, Trunk10 says, one of the best, less pricey perfumes. I know, grab it before they put the price up. So so what was I saying? This is uh, quite straightforward in its composition because it's basically a kind of musky, woody uh, vetiver. In fact, for some people, it's 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 their favorite vetiver, right? Um the vetiver is immediately there from the beginning, rooty and licorice-like. This is a vetiver that becomes quite swampy. And as, again, you know, regular viewers will know that I have an issue with vetivers that become quite swampy. They, they sort of start smelling like um, a little bit like sort of overboiled, oversteamed vegetables and onions. But, but you know, loads of people love that and they want swampiness. Um, oh, Pen Defense says, have never forgotten the day someone accused me of smelling like Yoda wearing encre noir, but in what way? Because that, you know, that meant that they thought you smelt like one of the wisest beings that the galaxy has ever known. Um, Eric says, I'm always interested that they still make encre noir. It's perennially discounted. Interesting. Maybe it's a fairly cheap scent to make. Who knows? Um, but long, long may it be with us. Um, yeah, and, it, and it, it, it's got probably tons of isoe super in there to kind of bring out a cedariness. Well-judged citrus note at the top. Again, probably would be seen as being more masculine than anything else. I mean, it is sold as a masculine perfume. Um, 
but it, it works, you know, as a kind of straight up and down vetiver that doesn't pretend to be anything else. It really, really works well. And of course, that is also the essence of sophistication. What's that, what's that Italian word? We've talked about it here before, where you sort of, you know, where you're chic without making it look as though you've tried very hard to be chic. Is it, is it sprezza, sprezzatura, something like that? You know, that kind of effortless style where you sort of throw things together and uh, sprezzatura, says Rachel. Thank you very much. It, it's got that kind of feel to it, I think. Okay. And I should wear it more often, actually, and then somehow try and strip it off my being when it starts becoming swampy. Of course, the thing with that swampy feel is that you, you can you can spray it on fabric. And so it takes a lot longer to get to that swampy feel if, you, if that's what you happen not to like. And we've got two to go. At number nine, we return to Monsieur Jean-Claude Elena. So I said we would have um, a cold spice one from him. And I said we would also have something that revisits um, Isoe Super uh, in a big way. I, I love this perfume, but I also want to show off this bottle that I'm fortunate enough to have in my collection. I've, I've barely sprayed this bottle because, you know, I've, I've, I need to finish the other ones that I have. But it's... Um, it's Terre, of course, uh, from 2006, Terre d'Hermès, one of the best-selling masculines of all time and certainly one of huge, huge cash cow for, for Hermès. And this is a superb <laughs> look. This is a fantastic 200 ml bottle of Terre, Eau de Toilette, probably still my favorite version of Terre. Um, let's have a spray. I, you know, I, I love the, the design of this bottle with the H uh, you know, in the base. I love the spray mechanism. Let's have it. Let's have a smell. Let's remind ourselves of Terre. But ter the Terre is going to have to go somewhere here, isn't it? Let's get rid of the Lego figure for a moment. Pop that on there. Can that be seen? Yeah. Love Terre, says Shan. Who doesn't love it? Well, lots and lots of people love it, don't they? This is also actually a, a vetiver, but a very, very different vetiver from, um, from the Lalique. Everything about Terre is classy, says Western Oud. I know. I mean, that that is complete. You, you, if you want to be absolutely dead certain that you will convey and project sophistication and you don't want to take any risks, you need to go with Terre. You know, like Terre is the sort of perfect job interview scent or something like the, those sorts of occasions where you really, really don't want to take any chances. Um and and it's it's a structure that Jean Claude Elena completely made his own. Fantastic grapefruit, cardamom, citrus note at the top, cold spices going into this strong, 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 cedary, isoe, supery heart, and then a very, very beautifully judged, super clean, doesn't go swampy, woody vetiver in the base. But the whole thing projects at just the right level. Um, presents all of its, its facets to just the right degrees, um, lasts for just the right length of time, feels very, very naturalistic. It, it's the kind of scent that when you wear it, it just makes other people feel that that is the smell of you rather than the perfume that you've sprayed. Um, and it just works. I, I love, I love that sort of segue from the cardamom and citruses to the woods. And of course, it's a structure that he gave us as well in Cartier's Declaration, which I happened to wear the other day. Uh, then they're, they're not clones of each other by any means. I think the Cartier is, um, is sort of biased more heavily towards the cardamom and the spices at the top and less so the vetiver in the base. I love Declaration as well. I find Terre very unisex, says Aileen. Oh gosh, absolutely. I mean, I've been out perfume shopping with with female relatives and they have gone for terre as their scent it may also be another reason why it's done so well because perfumes aimed at men usually become classics and best sellers if they're stolen or adopted by wives and girlfriends like i mean that's what happened with osavage and i'm sure that's what happened with terre um Rachel says Hermès eccentrically sophisticated. Yes, because Hermès is eccentric, isn't it? Yet again, is a great autumn scent, says Gavin. That's a, that's a good recommendation. We are on to our final one. And in a way, I have saved the most sophisticated one for last. Um, but it's also one that a lot of people will think nowadays maybe just smells a bit too retro, a bit too vintage. But the likes of you and I do not care because 
if you want sophistication, and like I said, if you don't want to take any chances, you probably want to go for a sheep. And if you want to go for a sheep, you need to do Mitsuko. You need to do Garla Mitsuko, and you need to do Garla Mitsuko in extra form, because that is still the best form of the perfume. And where are my dates? That is, of course, legendary 1919 composition by none other than Jacques Garlin. Th this is this is this is just heaven. And talking about oh, Maudlin says my ultimate favorite. I mean, isn't just fantastic. And talking about unisex sense, I know so many men who wear this and just works fantastically on them. Um, this now, with this it, it, this is going to be too long and too complicated to get into here. But um, many of you will of course be aware that Mitsuko Extra went through quite a sad sort of phase and a lot of people didn't like it. And then Thierry Vassa came along and sorted it out and actually won an award or several awards for it. And so if you get the current version, and this I believe is what is considered to be the kind of current or current-ish batch, lives in my fridge, then it's, it's, it's really, really great. I mean, obviously it's not going to be um, exactly like the original the vintage because you can't use you can't use the oak moss but i th i think it's beautiful um paul says mitsuko was margaret thatcher's favorite perfume do with that information what you <laughs> really okay let's have a smell oh they really just don't make them like this anymore do they so we're not going to have our sheep mini mini sheep mini masterclass mini lesson anymore. I refer you to when I was talking about pour monsieur. Um, but this is if if pour monsieur is a kind of woody herbal sheep, then I suppose Mitsuko is going in the direction of the fruity sheep because of course it has that famous kind of peachy apricotty note. It's, oh, sorry, I'm just going to be really, really quiet now and enjoy smelling this. It It is just, it's just so impeccably balanced and so beautifully made. And you know, I said a few minutes ago that it may, some people may think it's aged. And, and yes, it is very much of its time. It is very much a 1920s composition, but it's also entirely timeless. And the, the, the bergamot is so beautifully done and the, the mosses come through really well and that kind of herbal facet comes through. It is it, it is the scent of the most impeccably tailored outfit worn with the most, you know, impeccably styled hair. And this is a hat, you know, this has got to be an outfit with a hat. And it's somebody who doesn't care how awful the weather is, they are going to go out into that autumn evening looking as stylish as they possibly can, even if it means wearing shoes that are slightly uncomfortable, because, you know, we have to suffer for beauty sometimes. We have to suffer for stylishness. And it's it's just heavenly. It is just heavenly. I mean, without any question, one of the greatest things ever poured into a bottle. And of course, a lot of people think it is the greatest. So that's why we had to end on that one because you you can't you can't really top you can't really top Mitsuko. Okay, so that's it. What are you folks saying about it? Uh, the of its time says Maudlin is probably why I like it. I like the history of it. It conveys. Yes, I'm absolutely um, with you on that one. Begging to be worn with haute couture says R M. Yes. But I guess this is the closest a lot of us will come to haute couture. It took me a while to appreciate Mitsuko, says Suleika, but now I really enjoy its beauty. It's one of the rare sheep I can wear. It's so smooth, not cold as many other sheep out there. Natalie says, I wear Mitsuko with black and white outfits for some reason. No, that makes sense. That makes a kind of sense, actually. I'm with you on that one. The peachy note, says Paris 07, reminds me of Naima as well. Naima is my ultimate all-time favourite. I love that too, as you know. But it is almost impossible to buy in Canada. Uh, and Ty says Naima is my favourite Gavelin as well. Um, Gavin, interestingly, says, I find Après Londe very dated, but not Mitsuko. Interesting. Okay. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for all the comments and all the recommendations. Thank you very much for all the questions. Keep them coming anyway. Uh, it, you know, you can't you can keep them coming after the end of the broadcast. Uh, stay tuned to social media for information about more 
videos coming your way soon. But until then, be good and yeah, take care. See you soon and enjoy the autumn. Bye now.